Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's conversation on coaching to create employee engagement. Absolutely delighted to have each and every one of you here. I've got to share with you, it is so fun to see so many familiar faces and also great to see so many new names as well. Uh, to let all of you know, many of you submitted questions ahead of time. I do have those, and we'll be working to answer those as we go through, and then, of course, addressing questions at the end as well. In addition to the questions you submitted ahead of time, feel free to submit your questions during the conversation by typing them into the question box in your control panel. I will monitor that as we go and answer those questions. Also want to let all of you know that at the end of the conversation today, I am going to give you an opportunity to have an additional half hour one-on-one -on -one if you want to take advantage of that so that you can get additional questions answered. So hang out. We'll talk about how to make that happen. Uh, so very, very excited. The recording of today's conversation will be available later on YouTube. Uh, after the webinar today, I will email all of you a link so that you can see it again, get information again, etc. All right, given that we have just 30 minutes and so much to cover, I'm going to get us going. The first thing in terms of agenda, we will talk about engagement, got some interesting statistics there. We'll discuss individual coaching and then group or team coaching. We will then move into coaching for strategy development, coaching for implementation, and coaching for accountability and results, and then review the resources that are available to you. So first off, about engagement, and this is an amazing uh, insight this series of statistics. So there was a great study that was done uh, by Deloitte at Global Human Capital Trends. And in that research, they stated that 78% of business leaders retention and engagement as, check this out, urgent or important. This is a hot topic, a big topic, and of course that makes sense. Engagement is going to make a huge difference in terms of talent retention, productivity, etc. From that same study, what they looked at is the elements that drive engagement. And this study is available online. This is a screenshot from the website where they have the study. They talk about the meaningful work, hands-on management, positive work environment, growth opportunity, and trust leadership. Now what's interesting about this is they cite specifically coaching under hands-on management. <laughs> hey, I'm going to throw out the idea that coaching is absolutely essential in terms of having a positive work environment as well. Coaching is definitely a growth opportunity, and it's going to make a difference in terms of the trust in leadership. What does it do for meaningful work? Well, think about it. It engages them in figuring out what they want to be doing and how they want to be doing it. So while it's specifically in one of these categories, it really fits with all five. Now, in, in the global workforce study, and this to me is scary. This is, again, a screenshot from their study. It's available on the Internet. So in that study, they say 35% are highly engaged. Wow, that's not very many. <laughs> Think about what this means. You've got 22% of the workforce saying they are unsupported, 17% that are detached, and 26% that are disengaged. What is that costing the companies? What's that costing in terms of the workplace culture, the environment, the productivity, etc.? So this is incredibly significant insight, and it goes further. I, I, this is a great study. Washington Business Journal published this, and they say that organizations with less than 25% employee engagement, okay, wait a minute, we just saw that globally that's the norm. Uh, so in, in a normal workplace, you get more accidents because of that lack of engagement. 
So it's definitely costing us. Then, Bureau of National Affairs, $11 billion lost based on turnover. And, and of course, what's a big reason behind turnover? It's that meaningful work level of engagement. Think about it this way. And this comes out of employee engagement uh, report, and it's a great way to explain it. Pretend that this level of engagement is a conversation around the company computers. 20% work properly, 60% are unreliable, 20% do not work at all, or are infected with viruses. <laughs> What's that doing to the workplace? All right, so what is coaching? Uh, knowing that many of you are familiar names uh, in terms of who's here, I know that you know, and for some of the new faces, I love this definition. It comes straight from the International Coach Federation, which is the gold standard in terms of coaching. It's our self-regulating body. And the way they define coaching is that it's a strategic partnership. The coach empowers the client so that the client is clarifying their own goals, creating their own action plans, moving past their obstacles, and achieving what they choose. What's really significant here is it truly is about empowering them, putting them in charge. Well, think about it in the place if they're in the job, it's because they have the ability to do the job. So it's giving them the freedom to actually do what they're there to do. And that's incredibly significant. Now, bottom line impact, just backing up, and some of you have seen these statistics, a uh, lot of research out there on coaching and the return on investment for what it is and what it does. Some of you in your questions ahead of time were saying, you know, how do I make the case for this? Well, go online and Google return on investment coaching. You'll get a lot of studies. Most of them range between 500 and 700%. The most commonly cited study is this one from Manchester Inc. And they cite a 570% return on investment. <laughs> OK, wait a minute. 570%. For every dollar put into coaching, they get 570% back. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. I don't care who the company is, when you look at those numbers, it makes sense. Now, of course, it's also a lot of fun to start sharing, hey, here are the companies that have coaching programs, what they're investing, what they're getting back out of it, because it's very, very easy to demonstrate what it does. It's as simple as doing the research. Now, another great statistic that's out there. When you do a training program, a lot of companies believe in training, you get a productivity increase of 22%. When you combine that with coaching, you get an 88% improvement. OK, four times the difference by adding the coaching. Of course it makes sense. Of course it's a value add in an organization. OK. So we have the definition for individual coaching. What is group or team coaching? Well, let's extrapolate. Let's take that individual coaching and build. Now you've got a group of people together. It's thought-provoking. It's creative. And it inspires everyone there to engage. You're maximizing the personal and group or team potential. And that's incredible. It's very powerful, it's positive, it's proactive, and it moves people forward. Coaching increases group or team and individual as well uh, in terms of results. It also is a tool for supporting the achievement of goals and objectives. Well, what's engagement about? It's about supporting the individual, helping them grow and learn and advance in a way that's meaningful to them. Coaching is a tool for exploring ideas. You get insight from a variety of perspectives when you do a group coaching. Even in an individual session, the coach is challenging the individual to consider different perspectives as well. So you're going to gain that insight. It's, uh, I love this term, uncovering. You're uncovering options and opportunities and possibilities. 
coaching is used to create an awareness of different roles and different approaches to the work. Think about what's happening in the workplace. You get a group together, you do a group coaching, and have them discussing, OK, what is each person doing? What does that mean? How does it work together? How does it support the bigger picture and bigger objective? It gives you an opportunity to have that targeted conversation and, of course, as a result, the outcome. You're in that group, you're creating the buy-in and ownership because ultimately it is the group that's figuring out how to make it happen. And when the individuals involved are the ones figuring out how to do it, they own that. And the follow-through increases exponentially. Coaching is a tool for strategy development. Successful strategy development definitely requires knowing the difference between managing, mentoring, and coaching. You see, managing, you very specifically have an end objective in mind. You have responsibility as a manager, etc. Can managers effectively use coaching skills? Yes, they can use them. They can apply them in their ongoing processes, conversations, etc. It is different than actually being a coach. A mentor, well, a mentor is somebody who's got lots of experience and they're passing it on. They're passing on that wisdom. They're giving advice. Again, a great role. And can they use coaching skills? Well, of course. Coaching itself is different in that it's really asking the individual the questions so that they explore and they figure it out. And that's the huge difference. It's about asking. Now, when you apply that in terms of strategy development, what exactly does that mean? Well, they're getting clear in terms of expectations and goals because they're the ones defining it. Think about it this way. When we do the telling, they're missing much of it. They hear one word in seven. We have a hard time processing all of it. Their brain wanders. They're thinking about other things, et cetera, misunderstanding, all very common. When you're coaching someone and you're asking them, OK, what is your understanding of the expectations? OK, what are the goals for the organization, for your team, OK, and for you personally in terms of what you want to accomplish? And it's a fabulous, fabulous tool for getting specific there. It's going to create that awareness in terms of what's going on. And again, that buy-in, because they're fully engaged in the conversation and in figuring it out. And then you're taking the people who are actually doing the work and having them develop the processes for doing it. Makes a lot of sense, given that they're the ones who are actually doing it. So excellent awareness there. It truly is a tool for the ownership and the accountability. Coaching in terms of strategy development is going to ensure that new and existing competencies lead to quantifiable results. Now, one of you asked ahead of time, how do we do that quantifying? How do we measure the outcomes of the coaching engagement and the coaching relationship? So of course, the answer is different for each organization. It depends on what you want to accomplish in the first place. Some of it depends on the budget, yeah, because it takes money to, to measure and, and do the work on that. Some of it depends on the metrics that are currently available. So an example to pull from is look at some of those research studies on the return on investment for coaching. It's a great example. They said, OK, so some of the results are qualitative, and some of them are quantitative. How do we deal with that? How do we really work to measure those? So they defined that, and they figured out how to assign value to some of the qualitative pieces. It's also really easy to look at parts that you can quantify. Many companies use tools to measure employee engagement, to measure productivity. It's also easy to look at what the turnover rate is, what the costs of turnover are, et cetera. So you've got different ways. The best approach in terms of measuring the results is to decide ahead of time. What do you want? 
to accomplish with the coaching, what are the possibilities in terms of measuring the results, and then what metrics are available, and going from there so that you take a before the baseline and then the after with those metrics. Uh, I, it does make sense, by the way, to measure both qualitative and quantitative on those results. So hopefully that's answering that question. If you have a follow-on to it, feel free. Uh, actually, I think there were a couple of questions built in on that one. All right. So the bottom line is that management practices are going to make a difference. And so another of you was asking about how do you coach the managers on this? It's interesting. Uh, think about it this way. If you get together with a friend and you got, you're telling them about something's going on in your world and your friend wants to help, so what do they do? They start giving you ideas and advice and you're thinking, oh, that's a great idea. I really like that. And the chances are you're not going to do it. Well, in the workplace, think about how the work world has changed. Years and years ago, it used to be the boss said, hey, go do this. It's my way or the highway. And we just did it. And then it started changing. And they started saying, hey, I'm going to tell you what I think as the boss. And then you can tell me that you agree with my idea. <laughs> and then we have slowly progressed to asking for the ideas. And ultimately, what really works is when you have management that truly empowers the employees to do it. And that means listening to them. It means asking them questions. That's how you're going to maximize your outcomes. It's also a fabulous opportunity when you think about strategy development. Because when you get multiple people at the table in that group coaching setting, you're going to have a lot more brain power, a lot more give and take, a bigger exchange of ideas. And it's going to make a difference in terms of what you get on an outcome. It also means that the employees are experiencing the belief of leadership in them. That is huge in terms of employee engagement and also the productivity. It increases the ownership, again, because they create the plan for themselves. Absolutely significant and powerful. OK. Coaching is also an opportunity for communicating the bigger picture effectively. Uh, lots of uh, studies out there on this one as well. When an organization is going through change, one of the big deficiencies is how that is communicated to people in terms of what's going on. And then how people are involved in the process for moving forward with that change. So when you have a coaching environment, you're going to open some doors in terms of the communication process. When you specifically are coaching individuals or groups, you have the opportunity for asking, hey, what is your understanding of this? What does it mean? What are the opportunities? What are your thoughts? How are you going to work with this and work with the team in terms of moving all of us forward? So it's an incredible opportunity there. And Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology said it. Effective and timely coaching can make the development and implementation of a business strategy, check this out, less daunting and more successful. It absolutely makes a difference in terms of outcomes. Now, coaching for implementation. It's an opportunity to explore. What is the organization's purpose, and how do individual roles support that purpose? This applies to individuals and individual coaching. It also is really incredible in the group coaching process. Uh, what we've seen happen is a new awareness that coworkers have for each other's role, what other people do, and then how they all work together. So very, very powerful in that regard. Coaching for implementation is going to create an outcome-focused process, and it's going to support developing individuals as contributors. So when you have a coaching engagement, guess what the focus is? It's on the future. What do you want? How are you going to get there? What are the opportunities? What are the obstacles? How do you move forward? So it definitely is outcome-focused. It's on the future. In addition to that, coaching is a way for developing 
the individuals in terms of contributors. So that individual person is really given that opportunity to explore for themselves, hey, what is this? What does it mean to me? How does it work? What's my part? What am I going to do? Etc. And because of that, you're developing them. And this all goes back to the employee engagement, the ways that coaching is going to make a difference. Coaching for implementation involves the ongoing group and team coaching and the ongoing individual coaching. So sometimes people ask, how long in terms of the coaching? Well, the bottom line is, if it's getting results, and it, do you want to continue it or do you want to stop it? So when it's getting results, we keep doing it. The other thing to be aware of is creating change takes time. It is a process. So if we say, okay, we're going to do one session, and all of a sudden you're going to have a different person or a different team, is that realistic? Of course it's going to take time. That's the reason when people offer coaching services, they look for a minimum commitment in that coaching relationship because it's going to make that kind of difference. Now, coaching for implementation, bottom line, is the bridge between planning, training people, and then effectively implementing. It goes back to the statistic that was shared earlier. When you do training, you get the 22% improvement. When you do coaching, the 88%. Okay, how come it's different? Well, when you have that coaching conversation, what happens is, okay, you've got that information. What are you going to do with it? What does it mean to you? How are you implementing it? What are your action steps for moving that forward? And when you have that conversation with them as an individual in terms of their part in it and what they're doing, it makes a huge difference in terms of the implementation because now they're clear and they're developing their own plan in terms of what they're doing. So fabulous, fabulous tool there. Okay, next, coaching for accountability. So sometimes we struggle with this one. And let's talk about it in a couple of ways. First off, let's talk about motivation for following through on something. Internal motivation means it comes from inside of a person. External is they're doing it for someone else or to avoid a consequence. Well, in coaching, one of the things we talk about and learn is that external motivation gets a short-term result. So if somebody is doing a task because their boss told them, because they don't want to get yelled at, uh, you know, hey, that's how they're going to keep their job or whatever, you're going to get a short-term result. You're going to get a, a minimal level of engagement, a minimal level of ownership and buy into it. Now, when you have a coaching conversation, the coach will ask them, okay, and what does it mean to you? Oh, well, my boss won't yell at me. Okay, that is true. And what does it mean to you personally? And dig into that so that the individual is really thinking for themselves personally. What do they get out of it? Oh, well, okay, it'll be a learning experience. Uh, it'll be something I uh, can move forward with. Um, you know, I'm going to feel good about having accomplished that, the confidence, et cetera, et cetera. And so when they start defining their own benefits from doing it, it makes a huge difference in terms of the accountability. Now, an additional benefit that comes out of the coaching relationship for accountability is when they're the ones who are figuring out what the action steps are, how they're doing it, et cetera, that's huge. Because they design the action step, the accountability is at a much higher level. That happens naturally. So ultimately, productivity, loyalty, retention are going to increase exponentially when everyone is engaged. We know the research on that. And coaching engages everyone. Whether it's individual coaching or group coaching, each person is engaged in that conversation. Engagement links directly to high performance and productivity. It engages individuals in their own accountability. So for example, when we're coaching people, we ask them, how do you prefer to manage accountability? And how do I support you managing your accountability? So it really is giving them the ownership. 
and that is a significant piece to the puzzle. Now, coaching is focused on achieving desired results. What is it you want and how are you getting there? It very much is developing the individual goals and the individual timelines for doing it, and it is co-creating the accountability process, having that conversation with the individual. So, concepts, a lot of ideas. I'm going to walk through some of the resources available to you on this, and then I'm going to go back and go through more of your questions and take additional questions. So first off, the International Coach Federation is a great resource. They are a nonprofit professional membership organization for coaches. That's who provides information on ethics, competencies, etc. Ideally, the Center for Coaching Certification is a great resource for you. That's where we provide the coach training and the Center for Coaching Solutions because we're outsourcing the services to you. So the International Coach Federation website is coachfederation.org. Lots of great information there. The Center for Coaching Certification is at centerforcoachingcertification.com. Lots of great information in terms of training and other opportunities. And then the Center for Coaching Solutions, where we are a resource for coaching results. So to let you know, we do have a blog. New blog post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday with great information. We publish books. Every year we come out with a new book and lots of great insight there for your specific application. They are available on Amazon. You can check them out on our resource page as well. Uh, webinars, just like this one, we do every month. We also host 60-minute webinars every other month. We do want to be available to you if you want to call or email with specific questions. Happy to be available for that. The Center for Coaching Solutions is a resource for outsourcing. Whether you want consulting on starting and running a coaching program, we actually offer a free white paper on that as well. If you want training, let us know. And if you want coaches available, the best practices based on American Management Association is to have internal coaches for entry level to mid-level management people. And you do want the internal coaches trained externally. That's best practices. Another best practice is to have external coaches for mid-level on up in terms of who's getting the coaching. So that's a resource for you as well. What are your next steps? Uh, I mentioned that I was going to give you that free 30 minutes. Do you have more questions you want to ask? Do you want to learn more about what the opportunities and resources are, however you want to use it? After this conversation, I'll send all of you an email with that link, and I'll let you know in the email, just email back, I'll email you a link to my calendar, and you can schedule yourself at a time that works. You do want to be thinking about which resources make sense for you, and creating your plan for achieving the results. We're here to be helpful to you and to support that. So at this point, what I'm going to do is go back into answering questions. So I want to share with all of you the status of that, because those of you that scheduled yourself on a really tight time basis, great. We've covered what we were here to cover. Those of you that want to hang around, ask additional questions, get your questions answered, etc., that is what we are here to do. So definitely excited about that. All right. Uh, first off, one of you did have a question on a review of coaching skills, uh, bolstering coaching skills, had a couple of different questions on that. A couple of thoughts for you. First off, we do a free webinar each month on coaching and on coaching certification. There's one tomorrow. A link to it is on the home page of the Center for Coaching Certification. And in that webinar, we go through the 11 core competencies. In addition to that, there are also lots of recordings on the website, and we frequently uh, write blogs on the different coaching skills. So we want to make those available. Uh, given that today's conversation really is focused on that employee engagement, what I want to do is make sure I'm at least giving you the resources for it, and of course, am available for that 30 minutes. Uh, so next question: uh, the challenges of a coach. So if you are 
coaching people uh, in that business environment, what are those challenges? So a couple of things. First off is the level of knowledge in the organization in terms of what coaching is, how it works, and the benefits to it. So it does make sense to do your research on the return on investment uh, and have that information. It's very important how you set up the coaching relationship. Uh, for individuals who are coached, you're talking about creating change. What is it they want to accomplish? Well, that's work. It involves self-awareness. It involves exploring different possibilities, being open to those, and then developing their strategies and action steps. So it's a lot of work. As a coach, of course, you're supporting that. The bottom line is knowing what you're there for, what you want out of it, and what your process is to move you toward that is going to make a significant difference in terms of actually achieving that. Okay. Uh, let's see, also had a couple of you were asking questions on coaching increasing engagement. What's about that is we have this tendency to want to overcomplicate things, and that's one of them. Because ultimately, the reason coaching is going to make a difference is because we are totally, totally focused on the individuals and on their ownership of what it is they're doing. That in and of itself really does create that engagement. And we can look at the studies all day long, and it's going to come back to them having the, uh, the opportunity, the learning, that they're empowered, that what they're doing is meaningful, and that is significantly impacted with your coaching. Okay, uh, another one of you was asking about uh, the engagement during change. Well, when you're talking about change, the big pieces that consistently come out are, hey, do we have the level of communication that makes sense? Do people get what's going on? And how are we involving them in the process? So of course, it goes back to that coaching. What's your understanding? Uh, what's it, what are different opportunities in terms of how it's communicated? What do you recommend? Okay, great. What's your role? What are the roles of the people on your team? How, what is your team doing? How is that all making a difference? And then how do you want to move it forward? So the coaching serves in times of change because of the communication process and because of empowering individuals and involving them in what they're doing and how they're doing it. That's incredibly significant. Uh, so let's see, a couple of you had very similar questions on that. So hopefully that is covering it for you. Uh, I have another question on the coaching model. I uh, do want to refer you back to that webinar we mentioned that we do for free where we talk about coaching because we literally are walking through uh, the Staircase to Success coaching model and we also describe the coaching process. So hopefully that's helpful to you as well. I believe based on what has come in, uh, we're now at a place where your questions have been answered. Thank you so much for submitting those. Definitely appreciate that. I also appreciate the uh, thank yous that I'm seeing in the question box. Thank you as well. Do let us know how we can be a service. We look forward to that. So thank you, everyone.